Check one, two. Go! Curious about real estate? Yes! Then you've come to the right place. Get the knowledge you need. Get over the fear and get started. This is the Michael Quarles Real Estate Show with your host, Michael Quarles. Hello, everybody. Michael Quarles with podcast number 83. Today, we have five questions sent in by real estate investors who had a question needed an answer. And remember, if you have a question, send it to support at bsffacademy.com. One more time, support at bsffacademy.com, and we'll get your question on and answered. Here we go. Question number one. Now that my home state is switching to predominantly judicial foreclosures, what methods are people using to market for redemption rights opportunity? Assuming mail pieces, what message do you convey? There isn't much activity within this market in my area outside of a couple other investors. Well, first, I wouldn't use a mail piece that said anything about the foreclosure, at least not in my state anyway. And um, in California, we have both judicial and non-judicial foreclosures. Most of them are non-judicial foreclosures. So again, I wouldn't, wouldn't say anything about helping them with their foreclosure. That's the best I could do on that answer. Other than that, fall forward, soldier. Question number two, I want a seller finance deal this spring or summer. That's my goal. I've set that up for myself. I'm going to assume I need to set the terms and payment structure around how it will benefit me and the seller. If I plan to sell the property and not hold onto it, should I mention to the seller that I plan to have the full note paid off way before the structured terms? I think it's always important that you're honest with the seller and tell them what your intentions are. And if you use my agreement, it actually says that we're gonna sell it and make massive amounts of money you may find that the seller doesn't want you to pay them off. And in, when if that's the case, um, then you'll have to do some, uh, exchangeable collateral where you're actually taking their note and putting it on another piece of property you'll have so they can continue the, the note and um, the terms of that note. Uh, sometimes they'll, they'll want to do seller financing because of the tax consequences and they only want to pay taxes on the amount of money that they receive. And so you'll need to do exchangeable collateral. You could also do a... Um, unsecured note, but that's really, you wouldn't really want to do that. Although you could, it doesn't seem ethical to me, but yeah, at all times, let them know. And sometimes, you know, that's also a benefit when asking for seller financing, letting them know that you're not going to need it that long. So yeah, fall forward. Thanks for listening to buy, sell, fix, flip. We'll be right back. Are you running out of leads? It's time you tried Yellow Letters at yellowletters.com. Get motivated seller leads through yellow letters, postcards, zip letters, typed professional letters, greeting cards, door hangers, and business cards. Yellow Letters is a full-service marketing company created with your success in mind. Get the personal attention you need to get your direct mail campaign started and get in touch at yellowletters.com. And we are back in three, three, two, two, one. one. Question number three. I'm speaking with a motivated seller who lives in a different state than me. When we agree on a price and I send him the purchase agreement, do I go over it with him over the phone? How will I meet him at the closing company if we're in different states? So you don't have to meet him at the closing company. Closing company can take care of all that stuff themselves. Absolutely get him on the phone once you fax him the agreement. And um, if are there are any questions, make sure that that gets done. Follow up, follow up, follow up. And we like, after we make an appointment, we follow, or a contract was sent out, we call three, five, and 10 days. So um, it's important. Sometimes those sellers will get cold feet if we don't follow up and, and talk to them. I always like saying when I'm on the phone with them, I'm gonna email you the agreement right now so we can go over the agreement right now. So you can go ahead and get that signed and get it back to me. And um, if you make it urgent, they'll, they'll follow forward and do everything. Congratulations, by the way. Question number four. In my market, we have Redfin, Dot com that gives us access to listed and sold homes. How does this information compare to the MLS data? Is Redfin sufficient in determining the fair market value of a property? You know, I have never used Redfin. Couldn't tell you the, if it is or isn't. Um, I like having access to the MLS or having someone that does have access that can give me a BPO. What I end up doing if I'm buying a property out of town after I contract it with the seller because we're using what the seller says and we're relying on their knowledge to be true and factual and accurate. Then I hire an agent, I give them $100 to give me an interior BPO, which they're glad to do. Based upon that BPO, then I know if I have to mitigate anything, lower, lower my price or anything like that. 
But as far as Redfin being sufficient and determining fair market value, we use um, seven data sets. So we're looking at all kinds of data positions, um, but having that on the ground BPO is your best one. Question number five, would you suggest doing a memorandum of contract for deals? Absolutely, every deal, but you just don't record them, you just get them. It's always to get it up front, so you get them at the moment you open up uh, the closing or open up escrow. So I just have them meet the, the escrow company and have the escrow company notarize it. It's gonna cost $10 probably to somebody. And um, whether you want them to charge you or if you want them to charge your seller, that's up to you. But I don't record them. I only record them if I feel like the seller's going sideways on me and um, wanting to sell it to somebody else. And keep in mind, if you don't, if you record one and then you subsequently don't buy the property, all you do is quick claim it off. So it's not real hard to get away, get it off the property after you record it. And before you can actually record it, and before you actually have it signed, take it down to your county recorder's office and make sure it's sufficient for them, that there's not anything special that they need you to attach or have or, or what have you. Everyone's a little bit different, so before you get it signed, go down there and make sure that it's sufficient and then um, fall forward. Thanks, guys, for the questions. I hope you enjoy this stuff. Um, until next time, talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Michael Quarles Real Estate Show. Get more info and stay in touch at michaelquarles.com.